<laughs> okay, sorry for the inconvenience here. This you probably might see this as like a double. I'll probably edit these two videos together, but some in, some uh, issues happen. And Stephen, yeah, continue on your topic about Luka Doncic and how he can be an all-time great. Okay, uh, I think I was talking about Luka Doncic a little bit before the uh, like the slowdown. We just kind of disconnected, so uh, we just need, like you're just editing the videos together, right? So uh, Luka Doncic, I feel like he has a he has a case. He's kind of in a similar situation compared to Giannis right now. Because his team, the team around him, isn't really good enough to be a contender level team. But if Dallas can um, can surround him with you know solid role players, you know better players, and find that missing piece, I feel like Dallas can be a threat in the West for sure in the future. Also, yeah, like uh, I was gonna talk more about the Bucks and how it does for Giannis. So, okay. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say like yeah, this is really special on how the Bucks were able to win their first championship since since 1971. It's been 50 years. It's funny how Kareem Abdul Jabbar he gave it their first, and then 50 years later, Giannis gave their first like from 50 years. But one thing about Giannis is that where would you have him ranked in today's today's game, today's players? I have him third. Like- yeah. In the third NBA? best player in the world, yeah. Uh, who, who's your top two? Katie and Steph. Katie and Steph. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say Katie and Steph would be in front of him. Is I honestly? That's, that's before that's the final started. Topic. Before the final started, I did say Giannis is better than LeBron right now. Yeah. Right now, in terms of right now, because Giannis yeah. is a lot younger, so he's a lot more dominant. And he's less in your Gian- I'm just gonna say Giannis is better than LeBron. LeBron is LeBron is obviously has the high basketball IQ, extreme athleticism, but you know, he's just incredible. He's LeBron is an incredible player, just definitely not to underrate him. But I feel like Giannis right now is just better for these past better, few years. yeah. And who was the one that just led his team to a championship? Yeah, Since exactly. The, uh, Dropping Giannis 50 said. points in game six. Exactly. 50 that was points. A hell- Dude, Giannis's free throw save box, man. He had like he made 15 yeah, made off 17, 17 free throws. Yeah, 17 off 17. 19. Because yeah, he had two more in the end. That's how he got 50 points. Man, that was that was incredible. Giannis, also, yeah, um, another thing about the Bucks free throw, uh, the Bucks half court offense is yeah, they don't make their free throws. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. just in this finals, they were just making their free throws. Man. Which is it does matter, but that's that's another issue for like how how not great of a championship team they are. They are a championship team at the end of the day, which is great. Mm. Giannis, guys. Also, the thing is, like, I, I, this is, this is just always crosses my mind. Just Giannis is only twenty six, and he's already won two MVPs, Defensive Player of the Year, a championship, a Finals MVP. Like, mm. oh, the only way that that the only way he can go is up. He can be, he can be in like the top ten when he's. In the top ten conversation, when his career is over, assuming he could keeps his trajectory. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it, it all depends on the Bucks now, right? Because he has a deal with him through his thirties. I think he's it's a four year supermax, so he's uh he's gonna be done with the Bucks. What when he's 30, 29, 30-ish? Yeah, it, 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 if he wants, to, unless he wants to stay, if they're in contention again. So he's just so yeah. So when the Bucks, so he's gonna spend most of his prime with the Bucks. So if you were to like win, even win even more chips, um, I feel like the Bucks need to do a good job at uh, keeping good players around them, like this year. Like Drew Holiday was 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 probably the greatest pickup that that have done. Bobby Porter's obviously in the offseason. That was. Do you think? Really do you good. think they'll make the finals again? Uh depends. Depends. Depends on what the Nets do actually in the offseason. Because I think right the now, Nets. I think the Nets are completely fine. They just need to stay healthy. <laughs> Looking at the the Eastern Conference right now, besides the Nets, I don't see anybody beating Milwaukee. I do okay, but the, the thing is, I do see Miami or Philly like getting better though. Mm, yep. So, well, if Philly, if Philly, if Philly gets Dame or something, that would be an issue. I highly doubt it. I highly uh, doubt that too. Yeah. I highly doubt but it. If, uh, but no, if Kawhi in the free agency goes to Miami, that is very possible. Who knows? Kawhi but, to Miami. Because hmm. he wants to play with Jimmy Butler, yeah. I, I haven't heard of that yet. I might have to look that up later. But really? uh, see, that's the thing, though. Uh, about Philly, they're in an interesting uh, position right now because they probably – I feel like they're looking to trade for some veteran guards. 
because of um of like Joel and Bede and how they're all getting really old. So like it's Philly's in win now mode, right? Basically, they have all the key pieces. They just need, you know, they like a, they need a trade Ben Simmons. That's just what it is. You know what would be a good place for Ben Simmons? San Antonio. I was thinking the Toronto Antonio. Raptors. The Toronto Raptors. I was thinking that too. Mm-hmm. You know why? I was thinking that too. But the reason why I said San Antonio is because like Greg Popovich is really the only coach that can hold Ben Simmons accountable for not shooting the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they have and they have one of the great shooting coaches in the NBA. His name is Chip yeah. England. He worked with Kawhi Chip Leonard. England, mm-hmm. Yeah, he worked with Kawhi Leonard. I've heard that. But I was also thinking, yeah, I was also thinking the same thing with Toronto too, because because it is you could have Ben Simmons at like the four or five, and you need like youth, right? Toronto needs young talent as well. So Actually, and, and I, like players like players like Ben Simmons don't come very often in general, right? You know, you're not gonna get a defensive, you're not gonna get a defensive player of the year candidate, a great passer. You're you're not gonna get that in like any. Like even the number four pick you have, you're not gonna draft a Ben Simmons from that. Yeah. I mean Ben Simmons, if you compare it to this year's draft class, Ben Simmons is giving me, you know, flashes of um Ben Simmons is kind of like a mini version of uh what's his name? Uh Kate Cunningham in a way, kind of like a big mm-hmm. guard who can I feel like Kate Cunningham has has a more complete package, but Ben Simmons, like with under a good developmental program like Toronto, for example. Is going to be Toronto's Toronto's going to make Ben Simmons a great player. I feel like it's going to be a good trade if we do like Kyle Lowry for, for Ben Simmons because I think their salaries actually match as well. So, but yeah, Lowry would have to agree on a sign and trade, and then that's going to be, uh, yeah. I mean, Lowry is for Kyle Lowry is from Philly, so mm-hmm. I don't see why he wouldn't want to play in Philadelphia. Would you trade Siakam for Ben Simmons because that, that's the trade package no. I was thinking of doing. Why no. would we trade Siakam for Ben Simmons? Because Siakam is kind of like in a, in contention to win now. He's not really going to be a great number one in the future. So well, and, and like he's not gonna and like yeah he's twenty seven. So like if you want a t- a younger player, basically, if you want a younger player and mm-hmm. Ben Simmons is on the market, I think just get rid of that. Because you're not in contention, unless you want to stay in contention. Yeah, don't get don't get rid of Siakam. But if you're not, it, holy, I don't know why my voice is cracking so often today. But yeah, if you're not in contention, then just like I don't, I don't know. This is, I've seen this opportunity. I've just, I, I, I'm kind of iffy on if it's a good or bad thing. I don't think it's a bad trade, but I don't think it's a really good one either. If if that makes sense. The good trade I feel like is Siakam to the Warriors. Actually, that one was actually a really good trade for James Wiseman and that seventh pick. James Wiseman is seventh, and uh, Andrew Wiggins just mm-hmm. to match salaries. That was a really good trade for Siakam because both. I would, I would think that is too. Yeah, both teams benefit a lot because Siakam's in, like you said, win now shape. And if he goes to the Warriors and Clay Thompson comes back, right? It's it, the no Warriors win now shape. Yeah, Siakam's in his prime. Yeah, he's in his. Yeah, prime. exactly. The, Toronto is. I mean, and he's not, and he's not a great, and he's not a great first option. Just you know that too. <laughs> yeah, and you have the one-two option on the Warriors already, Steph and Clay, right? So, mm-hmm. and then now with Siakam in the pick, that's it's gonna be insane for the Warriors. It's gonna benefit Toronto too. Obviously, we get that seventh pick, which we can use to get Kuminga if he falls down that deep. Do you think Johnson Kuminga is gonna fall into the seventh or? I honestly okay. Well, we'll do like a mock draft later on. Like we'll do that in the second bit if you want. But mm. I, I think they could select him over. I think they could select him with the fourth pick. And the reason Dr. why is I think I think he has the highest upside out of in everyone in this draft class, except for like Kate Cunningham. But like that's I think he has the highest upside. Like he has a Kawhi Leonard type ceiling. Uh, and the Raptors yeah. are really great at developing raw talent. Mm-hmm. And also another uh, another player that Toronto was, I was just searching this up. Uh, I saw this on the news a few days ago. Uh, ever heard of Scotty Barnes? Of course. I, I, I evaluated him. I don't know if you saw yeah. that. I don't think I yeah. saw that, but I feel like Scotty, Scotty Barnes fits with Toronto perfectly. Like as Toronto said, uh, Toronto wants to draft the best player on the board, not for team needs. But, mm-hmm. you know, for someone like... If for Toronto's developmental program, I feel like Scotty Barnes' ceiling is insanely high. Just kind, I, I don't think like, I don't think so. I don't think so. Why? 
because like when when you really like watch him, there's really nothing to develop. What like the only thing he's really lacking is a jump shot, which I think he could get it, but I think he's gonna be more used in if or it depends on where he goes. If you if he goes to Toronto, maybe he has a higher ceiling than I think he does, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's gonna go to Toronto. <laughs> If if that uh, I don't know if he will go to Toronto, but I don't think his ceiling is insanely high. Like maybe maybe like, I think he's similar to like a Draymond Green because he can do a jack of all trades. He can do the fundamentals, and he's built. He's built. He's built. He's probably more athletic than Draymond Green, anyways. But if he just gets that jump shot, which I do think he could probably get a type some type of it, I think he could be like a great, a valuable role player. Like right there, like just a valuable role player off the bat. Yeah. Well, that's the draft. Well, I guess we'll talk about that later. But I, yeah. I just, I just, I just feel like you know Ben Simmons would fit really nice. And like I know people are saying you know Ben Simmons you know belongs to the Shanghai Sharks, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's kind of I I even searched up San Shanghai Sharks and I saw him on that. Oh my god! Wait, I saw I like yeah. I saw him on a jersey. Like just it was just like what was a Photoshop thing. But. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing though I, I feel like toronto would definitely benefit from ben simmons like a lowry ben simmons trade actually okay yeah so let's let's actually talk about ben simmons more like because you know like i was a big ben simmons like supporter even like when he was going into the draft and even like this year right i thought mm-hmm. i thought i thought like he was he was a much better player than what people think he is but like he he he's the perfect example of how like basketball is a game of confidence mm-hmm. yeah He's just the perfect example of basketball with the game of confidence, and he's we, lost all the confidence in the, in the world to just shoot a shot. Toronto like can definitely uh, give it back. He can definitely shoot. He can definitely shoot the three. Like he can. We've seen. Yeah, exactly. Jump shot is smooth as hell. Like he can just. It's not smooth as hell, but <laughs> yeah. It, it is a three shot, like yeah, the one yeah. that he hit in the preseason. That one. The one that he hit in the preseason, the twenty twenty preseason, that was incredible. That was an incredible shot. Like you can see his form. It's. Yeah, no, no. My problem, my problem with like no, but also my problem with him is just that he's not really aggressive. He's not really aggressive. Like he, he can attack the basket really well. And you saw when he dropped like forty two points against the Jazz, right? Mm-hmm. He, he can drive to the basket really well. It's just the fact that like he's just not aggressive on a game to game basis. Like Yon, like we all know Giannis can't shoot, but at least he's aggressive. He'll give you high quality he'll give you defensive player of the year status and he's aggressive he, you know what you're getting from Giannis like game in and game out but he just yeah. doesn't try mm. I'm not saying he Gian- will be Giannis but like yeah I don't know I feel like he can't if Ben Simmons did try he would be sort of like a Giannis type player because Giannis yeah, is not afraid yeah, to shoot yeah. the three right Giannis is definitely not afraid to shoot the three like you see him taking the at times every, yeah, all yeah. the time yeah mm-hmm. yeah but teams still like beg beg for him to take it but yeah, even right. like, and even for like uh, his free throw shooting, right? Like, mm-hmm. even though, yes, yeah, shooting may not be one of your greatest strengths, you're not that bad. Mm-hmm. You're not that bad. Like, that, that just think... shows like confidence is all is key to like. And that's why I do think like San Antonio, Toronto are like good places for him because he's out of the spotlight. He's not, he's not going to be in a dick fan base because <laughs> mm-hmm. Philly, we all know what Philly fans yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, so like he he's gonna be in a much better situation than, and he's gonna be surrounded by really great coaching, mm-hmm. especially in the Spurs. And Rockers. all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I feel like Toronto should pursue. Like, if we do look at a uh, like a a Spurs Philly trade, what would that even look like for Ben Simmons? What the oh uh, like Derek Simmons? what like Derek White Dejounte Murray probably. But why would they give up two pieces of their young core for Ben Simmons? Because Ben Simmons is much better than them. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, Derek White, Derek White is getting better every single day. DeJounte Murray mm-hmm. also putting up really nice numbers last this season. Do you think that's really a good trade though? I would I would maybe, uh, maybe. I'm I don't even know who's on the Spurs right now, to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> I'm just those are like the first two guys. Oh, DeRozan, but he's a free agent. Maybe he goes like somewhere else, but you might where do you think I feel like DeRozan might actually go to Miami? Maybe. May I, actually, I'm yeah, let's talk. Right. Let's actually talk more about the off off season. So, uh, actually, wait. So we we t- we touched on we touched on the recap of Game Six in the finals. We we touched on our thoughts in the playoffs. Yeah, we talked about Giannis and the Bucks. So yeah, let's talk about the failure side, CP3 and the Suns. So where do you think oh, yeah. the Suns just lacked in the finals? I think we talked about this earlier, but I'm just gonna ask you this. So we can go more in depth. 
adjustments. They couldn't. They couldn't like. They couldn't respond to Bucks. Um, the Bucks defense basically. Interior presence. Yeah, you you messaged me during the game. Like, oh, they they couldn't respond to that. Yeah. I think their problem was just due to their backups, right? Because like mm-hmm. even when they had like DeAndre Ayton, Drake Crowder, Cameron Johnson to like guard it, they had no one else coming off the bench apart from like Tory Craig to just guard mm-hmm. someone. Like even yes. even when you had the matchup against Giannis, like all they could do was foul because like they didn't really have great defenders to go put on so, him. And also another thing, yeah, it's just I agree with you actually. It's just the defense and the and like the lack of defensive presence, kind of besides their like outside their starting five basically. And yeah, but I I also said shout out to Devin Booker for dropping those 40, 40 points. But like the Suns. If they really want to win the finals, it would have been this year. Like this year would have been their only chance. Because next year the Lakers are coming back healthy, the Clippers are coming back healthy, Denver maybe may Denver, my my sleeper team, they're coming back yeah. healthy. Dallas, if they if they probably give Luca better players, they're they're probably going to be a problem. Utah is probably going to be a problem too if they if they do well in the off season. The, st- Utah, the West would just be like, stacked. I feel like Utah and uh, Utah and Denver are like those teams where you know they they're good teams. They just need one more key piece in order to just mm-hmm. make it all the way. You know what I'm saying? I always said this about Utah. Like apart from Gobert, their defense is trash. Yep. Mm-hmm. They just they need. A, they, yeah, they do have what? I mean, they're, I mean, Quinn Snyder. Quinn Snyder. I feel like he's probably one of, like, honestly, Quinn Snyder is a really good coach. So I, mm, I, yeah, I, I do trust in the, I do trust in the Utah Jazz uh, coaching staff, but you know it's. I, I think I, they I, just. I, need... I don't follow. I don't follow Jazz basketball that much, so I don't know. Same, what's I, going don't. On I don't. Here, but... I hate. I hate the Jazz. <laughs> okay. In the Jazz, I, I feel like they're. I like Donovan underrated. Mitchell, though, man. But yeah, I think we'll... I think their problem was just not their problem was just surrounding Gobert with defensive talent because mm-hmm. they they don't have really great wing defenders. I, I'm, well, I'm not I mean, going to go deep into like what they do, but I'm just going to say that's their problem. Yeah. But like, however, since the Suns, we we're talking about the Suns, CP3 is a free agent this year. Do you think CP3 will re-sign with the Suns? or Maybe, because I don't think... I, it would be really bad if he played like that in the finals and just left. Left for nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be really bad. But if he really wants to win, then like I don't think the Suns will be a good spot for that. They, they'll the probably Suns. they'll probably be in good contention again. Yeah, like I'm still yeah. they're still gonna be a playoff team, of course. But I don't think they're gonna defeat the Lakers again. They're gonna defeat the Clippers again, especially like if they're all health, unless like injuries happen again. But mm-hmm. I highly doubt it would happen again. It's just yeah, this year is kind of just all over the place. Like you know, sleeper teams have never made the playoffs, make the playoffs, and then good teams fall off. Like you know, Warriors, Raptors, just two prime examples of good. I teams forgot about the Warriors. Game. I forgot about the Warriors. The Warriors will probably be back next year with yeah. Clay Thompson and whoever they the trade for. That's what I was going to say. That's what we were talking about, right? With uh, the Siakam trade, the Warriors are going to be insane if the Siakam trade actually goes through. <laughs> so what's the starting five? So you have like uh, Stephen Curry, of uh, uh, Stephen Curry, Curry Clay, Drake, Clay. Curry, Clay, Siakam, Draymond. Uh, so that's who's already- the wing? I have no idea, bro. Running. I don't even know who the starting center for the Warriors are besides like it was Wiseman. Kevon Looney. It was Kevon, Kevon Looney. Looney. James Wiseman. James Wiseman is more raw than we think he is. So like I don't so that's why they didn't really play him as much. But he is a talent. That's the thing. You from the games that he did play, yeah. You, know, you can see how talented. You see he really some, was. yeah. You see you saw how, the some of the stuff. Which is why I do think good Toronto would be good, should consider that trade because Wiseman does have a great high upside. So, what do you think Toronto's gonna take with number four, or the Houston? Suggs, Houston's Suggs, take Suggs. Number... Suggs for Toronto. Mm. I don't so think they should take Suggs, but I do think, but they're probably gonna do that because he's he's those are the cons- those are the top four. Mm-hmm. Who That's do I thing, think though. Houston will take? Who do I think Houston should take? You probably see me talk about this, but Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Mm. Yeah, you probably saw. You probably I told you I want to get Jalen Green. He just fits. He I feel like either Greens would fit in. Uh, sorry, either Jalen's would fit on the Rockets. I don't or, want Suggs. No, so J- Green. I think Green should be more in the conversation of like, is he better than Kate? I don't think he's better than Kate, but I do think he should be the consensus number two. 
Mm-hmm. Like Jalen Green. I do like Evan Mobley too. Evan Mobley is, is insane because like he he's been putting up numbers since like Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns when they when those guys were in college. But that's the thing. Like I don't know if he would fit well with Wood, and like I don't know. Yeah. Uh, not I don't know. Uh, uh, what do I say? It's not really great to draft a big right. Like I know Mobley's an exception to that, but I would rather have a guard, a guard or wing that has the upside of Jalen Green over the upside of Mobley. Mobley. Let's just see the draft though, because if if um so if Mobley does drop down to number four, Toronto's definitely taking the Mobley. They should there, easily so. no. That's like that's they not a debate. Easily, they yeah. easily just yeah. The Cavs just would just mess up at that point. Honestly, by I feel like Toronto. If Toronto really wanted Mobley, they would be looking to trade up. I don't know. No, I think I think they trust their, I think they trust their instincts at four. Because I think if even if Mobley doesn't drop, I think Kaminga would would be well with that team, and I do think Kuming- Suggs would be. What, but what team. would you take, Johnson Kaminga, with a forced pick though? That's kind of a waste of a pick. I'm not gonna lie. Really. I feel like Jonathan Kuminga is is going to drop. He's going to drop down to like seven. That's why I support the Warriors trade so much, right? Because Toronto could get great value out of Jonathan Kuminga. I feel like Jonathan Kuminga could go like the highest he'll go is like five or six, maybe. I feel like he'll probably fall into like seven to 10, honestly. I know, but I do. I think he has the highest upside in the draft, though. And he also has the experience with the G League. Well, see, that's the thing. Oh, though. yeah. So um, G League oh, yeah, players so are was, all like that. Yeah. So I was going to say, like, you remember you, you hear the rumors how the Rockets are aggressively pursuing the number one overall pick. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's good? I'm gonna give uh, you my opinion, but like I'm just gonna say, Cade, Cade on the Rockets. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Like, what, what do you think? I don't think they should trade up for the number one pick at all. Yeah, Why? because like if it depends on what they give up. If they give up so much just for that number one pick, I'm gonna be mad. Mm-hmm. Because like well, if the, you're like it's like I get Kate Cunningham's a really great player, but like at least like for all the picks you have, we don't know like who's really gonna we don't we really we really don't know. We're just projecting Kate Cunningham to be the best player from the draft, but we really don't know who will be. So we so like even if Kate Cunningham becomes a superstar, becomes a superstar in Detroit, and then like you pick Jalen Green, like I said, for the second pick, and he also becomes like a superstar potential. And then, like, yeah, you have all these picks, and then you can just build that infrastructure you need. That's just mm-hmm. my thing, because it re- it would remind me more of like how um the Philly and Boston a few years ago. Remember when Philly traded up to draft yeah. Markel Fultz, mm-hmm. and then Boston settled Jason Tatum, and they were the ones that won the trade. They're the ones well, that see, actually the won the trade. Well, yeah, that's that's like that's looking back though, because Mark at the time out of out of like fresh out of college, Markel Fultz was the better player. He, like if you look at his college <laughs> highlight tapes, man. I know even if Markel Fultz was good or not, but I'm saying the Celtics came out with the better of that trade. And even go back to like when was this like 1993 when Orlando had the first pick, they traded down to the Warriors. The Warriors drafted Chris Weber, and then the the Magic drafted Penny Hardaway and all these different assets. And those different assets were the reason why they made the finals two years later. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. That's the thing, though. They're all that's in the past. Like it's, it's all it's all. Oh yeah, on yeah. What of course, players in their of course, position. there are some. Of course, there are some exceptions to this. Like, uh, what do you mm-hmm. call it? Of course, there are some exceptions to this. Like where you just go, oh yeah, like where you're like, oh yeah, we it was a good thing we made this trade. But I, I can't think of the ones off the top of my head. Is there is there a good situation where that happened? Yeah, I yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think we can both we can both think of. And an example like that, but I'm just saying it's a huge risk, though, especially in this, especially in this deep draft class. Like this is probably the most staff draft class we've mm-hmm. seen in our lives, as like prospect wise, right? No, uh, no, really. Like depends, depends. Actually, I feel like prospect 20... wise, prospect wise, prospect not wise. not not like players in the NBA, yeah, but like prospect wise. Uh, I feel like 20, 2009 was also a really. Really yeah, but like we weren't like we weren't like old enough to analyze basketball well. Like that's what I'm. Yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Like we didn't watch basketball then in 2009. This was way deeper than like 2019, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I like mean, that's just what I, I'm just gonna say. Like, yeah, this is probably the best we've seen as in like as we we know more of the game. I'm honestly gonna say like the top 20 players, like the top 20 players in this draft, are probably good enough to be drafted in the top 10, right? 
Yeah, I agree with it, you. It's, I agree it's with a really, like really lottery good pick. Yeah, lottery pick. Mm-hmm. I also think like any of those guys can make an elite impact. Mm-hmm. Some like like some of those guys may have a lot of raw talent, like John Kaminga, you said, but they also have really high upside, and it really depends on like if they're on a rebuilding team or not. Does the Rockets have any other pick other than number? Yeah, three? 23, 23. Sorry, number two, my bad. Yeah, number two, 23 and 24. 23, 24. Hmm. You guys might be able to pick up, uh, what's it called, Johnny Zuzang, actually. Johnny Zuzang decided to go back to UCLA this year. Oh, he did? Really? Yeah. I'm a UCLA fan, so, like, you probably know, like, that. I've, yeah. I saw that, yeah. That was yeah, Johnny Zuzang. Johnny Zuzang. Hopefully, I feel yo, like he... if UCLA makes a run like that next year, yo. <laughs> that was a really the... great run. That was yeah, a really from, great run from the first from the eight first to, floor, first, yeah, first floor to like to almost the finals. Man, final yeah. four, final four, yeah, man. That was insane, dude. Okay, I feel yeah, like so Johnny Zuzang should have stuck with the. I feel like Johnny Zuzang should, should have like stuck to the to the draft. To be honest, maybe no, maybe he wants to uh, rise his stock. That's why. Maybe he wants to rise his draft stock. But now he he's definitely in a first rounder. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it depends on how he is in college. Like, hopefully, no injury happens, but. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's actually talk more about the offseason because, like, this is where I'm thinking, like, would you be surprised if Kawhi left the Clippers? Uh, I honestly would because the reason, the whole reason why he left Toronto was to, you know, go to L.A., right? He wanted to play for an L.A. team. That was just his, his entire desire throughout the entire year, right? Like, we, we just know Kawhi has been saying, hey, I want to go back to L.A., I want to play in L.A., right? That's just, like, he wanted to play in his home. And, and I respect that, right? It's, it's what it is, but... I don't think I honestly I'm kind of mixed on this because he also if the brought team you a championship. Back, yeah, I know he, he just left out of there out of nowhere, right? So that shows us how important home is to him. But yeah, I that's like, that that's what I thought too. Like I just think like I thought like I don't know if Kawhi would leave the Clippers is just because he made a big deal just to get there, and mm-hmm. and also like the Clippers made the conference finals this year without him. So like he. He's probably thinking, oh, if I played, we probably would have won the championship. Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like he's going to – yeah, he's not going to leave. I honestly, I wouldn't, I I honestly wouldn't be surprised just for the fact that he did leave a championship team to go to – to just to build his own team in L.A. Mm-hmm. The Raptors, yeah. Also, yo, speaking about championships, like Miami and Philly kind of mess, messed up. And you know why? It's because of the James Harden trade. Yeah, That's the, yeah. I was thinking about this last night. Like Miami let got rid of Tyler Hero. And I didn't want to get rid of Tyler Hero just to get James Harden. They didn't want to get rid of Tyler Hero to get James Harden. Yeah. Like it's just funny. It's just funny to just laugh. It, it's funny to just laugh at that. Yeah. See, that's the thing, though. If you look at Tyler Hero at the end of the at the end of last season, Tyler Hero was an insane player. I mean, he he did. Yeah, really that's well his stock was really high. Yeah. But that's the point. Like, if you were willing to get James Harden for Tyler Hero, like you wouldn't do that. Even at the time, like you you wouldn't do that. What was the trade? It was like Tyler Hero, Precious Achua, uh, uh what do you call like salary filler, like Andre Gudala and them. And then I think it was Kendrick Nunn as well. And then I think that was it. I think it was only like two, like one pick or two picks. Really? Yeah. The, and they, the Heat said Not no because Harden. they didn't get, yeah. The Heat said no because they didn't want to get rid of Tyler Hero. Huh. I highly doubt. Wait, no, not I highly doubt. Sorry. I don't think. Yeah. Why would. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you're just, la- you're probably laughing on the inside. Like what Wait, the hell did what? they just do? Yeah. <laughs> but it, no, no, it, that's it's, the a thing. De- it's a decent trade i feel like because you know but that's the but that's the thing like let's say like miami's probably mad right now if they saw if they see the bucks winning the championship and they let turn down that offer they're probably like if we traded for james harden we probably would have been the one having the championship not the bucks would they really though uh, i'm just saying like i'm just saying that as like a as a mm-hmm. as like a miami point of view but if you look at it from like an actual NBA point, even I don't Philly, think Miami, even Philly, would Miami even, with Harden? Sorry, go ahead. Even Philly, like Philly, Philly tried. They put Ben Simmons in the trade offer, but they didn't want to add Tyrese Maxey, right? So then they just said, okay, yeah, no. And then James Harden got traded to the Nets. But if they did, if Harden and Embiid were there, and then they probably they easily would have not lost to the Hawks. Like you just know that, unless like the injury for James Harden happened, but. That's just another hypothetical, but they probably would have been the ones to win a championship too. Mm-hmm. Like what they would the have been there. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. If the Hawks trade for James Harden? No, not the they... Hawks trade for James Harden, like the Hawks in general after in the offseason. What do you think you're going to do? They just keep I their don't core? Think, I don't think they should really sign John Collins. And that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because like he that's doesn't really fit too. them anymore. Mm-hmm. Because before they used to have these, before they used to have, they used to like attack the basket more and use these hot, use John Collins as like the role man and he would just, but now they have Clint Capello to be the role man, right? Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, I I feel like John Collins, it's time for John Collins to go. And where do you think he should go? I honestly don't know. What would would a good fit be? He turned down a, um, he turned down, I think it was a 90 million extension. So like a, a team with caps teams with cap space would only take him. But like where yeah, where would you want to go? What team has cap space? Charlotte? The Spurs, the Knicks, the Mavericks, the mm-hmm. uh um what do you call it? I'm talking about teams that like could make the playoffs next year. I'm not like because mm-hmm. if you have if you're like a bottom of the team, you probably have some cap space. Mm-hmm. But I, like those are the teams coming from my mind. Yeah, well, that's like I don't really follow Hawk, the Hawks too much either. So, uh, small like they're a small team to me, so I don't really. Okay, yeah, but uh, speaking of the more off season, so like one off season trade has already happened, right? That was the Kemba Walker one. Mm-hmm. That was wait. the Kemba Walker one. Wait, 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 wait! What? What was the trade? You don't remember? It was during the playoffs. Wait, what was the trade? It was Kemba Walker for out for and a and a sixteenth pick. For Al, for the 16th pick for Al Horford and Moses Brown. Moses Brown. Oh, oh yeah, I remember hearing that. Never mind. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah I know it's kind of slept under the rug because no one's really talking about it. But yeah, that yeah. that move already happened. The Boston Celtics got rid of um, Brad Stevens as their coach, and now he's their manager, general manager. Mm-hmm. Rick Carlisle is out of uh, is out of the Dallas Mavericks. Mm-hmm. The Blazers re- acquired Chauncey Billups, and Rick Carlisle's on Indiana actually. So like, what do you, so this offseason so far has been pretty decent. Like, what mm-hmm. do you think? What do you think about like the Kimball Walker trade and like all these things that happened? Well, I actually haven't had a chance to look at that trade in more detail, but it, it's a good trade. I feel like there's no lose. There's no. It's. I don't have an opinion. I I would probably have to look at that trade a little bit more and talk about on the next podcast. But the, how like, about how about the Rick Carlisle fire? How about the Rick Carlisle? Rick Carlisle joining India and then parting ways with the Mavs. I mean, after all these years, I feel like Rick Carlisle, um, honestly, again, I, I don't, I don't think coaching with the pro- was the problem in Mavericks. Uh, that's, sorry, that's at, what uh, I thought too. Dallas, yeah. yeah. That's what I thought too. Uh, I feel like honestly, Dallas is just not surrounding Luke with quality players. They try to do that with Kristaps Porzingis, but like he doesn't yeah, really Porzingis do much. Is, yeah. Yeah. Like, have you saw the have you seen the memes on the yeah on the internet? You Chris stops Porzingis. <laughs> he's only he's the Joe tall Harris, guy. He's Joe the Harris, guy Ben Simmons, yeah. Andre Drummond, and Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kyle Kuzma, Ben Simmons, freaking Joe Harris, Chris stops Porzingis. Yo, starting and Rudy, starting and five Rudy for Go, the and Rudy Gobert, <laughs> starting five for the Shanghai Sharks, twenty twenty two. Oh man, dude, that was that's the thing though. Um, yeah, I feel like coaching isn't a problem in uh, in Dallas. Wait, did they hire a new coach? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. The, Net, the, the Celtics hired a new coach. It was like this Nets old assistant. Uh, they Mavericks had Jason Kidd, huh? They hired the... Jason Kidd. I mean, it's giving me Jason Kidd as Mavericks' new head coach. Really? Wait, where? Did, when? When was that? I have no idea. I didn't see this either. I feel like they haven't hired like a real head coach. Like, Maybe they're Rick like Carlo, in the discussion of that. I don't know. Like when Rick Carlisle was fired, I think they just put the next because Jason Kidd was an assistant coach with uh, with Dallas before, right? Was he? Yeah, I, I don't know. Wait, let me search it up. I have a phone right next to me. Just search up Mavericks head coach. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, Jason Kidd, 2021 to present. Mavericks signed Jason Kidd as new head coach. Yeah, June 28, 2021. I did not see that either. I didn't see that either. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. 
maybe, maybe because so much has been happening that like we just that was just kind of slept under the rug. Yeah, this I feel like all of these tr- like movements and stuff it just all slid under the radar, like you said, because the playoffs are is so insane this year. It was, yeah. This was the I said this is the greatest final since 2016. Like to watch at least for me. But you for you, you probably say like oh 2019 was better, but like you're a Raptors fan, so like you had that vibe. But like as a as not a Raptors fan, I'm probably just like, yeah, yeah, it was just a, any other finals. Because the Raptors had the advantage of a 3-1 lead, right? And then they just closed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but game four and game five, like those were the best game. Those were the best games in the series, for sure. Game four, game five. Yeah, in yeah. Uh, this, yeah. That's I'll still game. say the Nets Bucks game seven was the best game in the playoffs. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah. KD, KD had to. KD, it was just a full on KD. Like if his uh, shoe, if his shoe was not on the, if his shoe was just like, like one inch shorter. <laughs> imagine, imagine KD was like KD actually hit that shot in overtime and sent it to two OT. Hmm, that'd be yeah. that shot in the end where he tried to tie the game. Was it that yeah. that one you're talking about? Yeah, mm-hmm. but you can just tell like he was just gassed from all the stuff he can do. Mm-hmm. I mean, he played like forty-five minutes that game. Yeah, was... I think he, I think he played the entire game. Actually, I'm not sure. Oh, really? Uh, I'm not sure. Dude. Okay, but you said DeRozan will go to the Heat, right? And yeah, I know. Maybe, just... maybe. And why is that? I don't know. Dude, I feel like DeMar DeRozan is at that age where he probably wants to win the chip. Honestly, because I feel like he, he he obviously doesn't really fit in San Antonio, so. Yeah, he's just not on their timeline. Like they're not trying to. And so, like, who would benefit from a veteran shooting guard? Who? Hmm. Honestly, tr- imagine Toronto gets the Rosen back. <laughs> I, was, I was actually gonna ask you. I was actually gonna ask you that. That would be so. That would be interesting. Because I have a like, feeling. Would you? Is... But like, what would you do with him? Are you just gonna? Is he just gonna help the? Is he? Is he just gonna mentor the young? The young people? And also like if, like let's always... say, like let's say you do draft like Jalen Suggs or like Jonathan Kaminga or someone. I'm not saying he's gonna be like that, but like, do you think he'll mentor those guys? Yeah, of course. And also, like, when DeRozan actually comes, DeRozan is a number one choice player. You just know that. And if you put uh, like, someone what, like, you think he's like a number one option of, on the championship team? Not a, not on the championship team. That's what I was just gonna say. Like, if we do get DeRozan back, Toronto's not gonna win the championship. We're gonna go deep into the playoffs, of course, but. I have a feeling Toronto. Oh, not deep. I would not say deep. I would say I would say maybe maybe the conference finals. If Nick the Nurse pulls that, if Nick Nurse pulls that shit, like he's gonna be the go coach. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> really? If he, he's good, not okay, no, no. I mean, like today's best coach or something. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Man, like, <laughs> I don't think anybody in the history is ever beating uh, what's called Phil Jackson or Greg Popovich. Either one of those guys. Pop isn't yeah. But that's the thing, though. If you, um, DeRozan is a comfortable number one option player, first option player. Yeah, because he he did that with Toronto before. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing with Siakam, right? So if if we get someone that Siakam can play behind, uh, Toronto is going to be a very good team. It's just how it is. I was because I was actually going to say, like, do you think DeRozan was the problem, and that's why like you couldn't win a championship with him? I uh, I think yeah, because DeRozan. The Rosen was kind of like the Rosen never really showed up too much. Like he, he would be a mediocre star, quote unquote, but he wouldn't be like you know like the like Giannis for example, right? I don't think he was the problem. What was the, what was the problem? I don't think he was the problem. It's just that I'm not gonna fault the Rosen for being as good as Kawhi for not being as good as Kawhi Leonard. Like mm-hmm. I just think I Toronto like Rosen is the Rosen is just not good enough. That's that's literally what the problem was. It's not his fault. He's just not good enough. Yeah, he's just he's just not Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, but yeah, like he did also, he did have his playoff hiccups. Yeah, but like I just think that's exactly just who he was. And also, he couldn't really shoot the three that well in Toronto. Yeah, he so didn't. Was, he got better as a but this year he's probably one of the most underrated playmakers, mm-hmm. or not just underrated players. I mean, not playmakers because he he got better at his playmaking ability. Yeah. I mean, now that DeRozan hates uh whatever his name is, uh Masai, I highly doubt. I highly doubt I, he's gonna. I don't. I yeah. don't think he hates Masai. Did he say he hates Masai? He probably he probably does. Honestly, 
I he think he could, like I think he could, on, I think he could go back to Toronto, but I think it's just more of a farewell tour than an actual, like he wants to win a championship. He definitely does want to win the championship. Do you think Toronto's going to even have a chance in the next, like maybe five seasons? Unless you trade for like a superstar? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if, if Kawhi Leonard, but uh, no, not Kawhi Leonard. What am I going to say? If like whoever the next superstar disgruntled superstar is maybe like do you think you really like when james harden was in the trade rumors right raptors mm-hmm. were one of the teams interested in him do you think they should have done that no definitely not toronto wasn't toronto at that point i feel like they they weren't really missing we could we had, we had like a really good guard rotation toronto was losing because of the center position that's really it like toronto was playing too much small ball Throughout the twenty, but then at the same season. time, like you couldn't really, you didn't really have a guy like James Harden who can drop a consistent, efficient, like mm. twenty-five plus. And also another thing, Toronto is a very defensive team. Nick Nurse, like Toronto, throughout the, this time, like ever since Nick Nurse became head coach, Toronto has been very defense oriented. Uh, James Harden's not a defender, as everybody said. Like even if he tries on defense, he's not that good of a defender. So he's 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 he's. he's He's good. Like he's got a post defender. No, I don't really. I don't. I'm not really too convinced on that because Toronto. Toronto is like a good defense. If you look at what they're picking, I do th- no. But if you do surround James Harden with great defensive pieces, I think that would be a really solid team. Like who? You, OG. No, no. You just surround him with great defensive talent on the on your team. Like oh. Hmm. Yeah, I think that would just be pretty a, a pretty good team, and you can probably you probably could have made a, f- a far playoff run with that. Because I've, I've, I've always said this. I've always said this. I've always said this. If you, okay, some scammer phone is like right behind me saying these message, so I kind of lost my t- track. But I said if if you have a great defensive team and you have a couple of great offensive players, that's mm-hmm. not a bad team. Yeah. That team can it's, make a champion. That team can make a championship run. It's not a bad team, but I feel like it's not. It's like not think, that's how that's how the Mavericks did with Dirk. They built they they built him a great defensive team, and then, but yeah, like I do I do think you really if you really want to stay in contention, that was like your mm-hmm. only option. If you really uh, want to trade with him, but like if you Toronto. if you if you wanted to rebuild and like that was your goal this entire season, then yeah, it was not great to trade for him. I, I feel like Toronto's just in full rebuild now with the number four, and I feel like Toronto should just blow up the roster. Siakam included. They paid Siakam way too much. That's just like at the time the contract seemed logical, right? Because he you deserved. Yeah, yeah, he deserved a contract, but now he's kind of coming back to buy this. So I, I feel like, I feel like Siakam. It's not that he's bad. Siakam is a very good player, right? I just have. I, a feeling I think he, Siakam is just better as a championship number two and three. That's just my mm-hmm. opinion. That's literally what he is, right? So. I have a few because you see how he played when he's num- when he's the number one option on Toronto. So, mm-hmm. uh, it depends honestly. That's why I feel like it's it would be so good for Siakam, the Warriors, and the Raptors if that trade went through. I would yeah. love to take Andrew. I would love to take Andrew Wiggins and a really young James Wiseman and the seventh pick for Siakam. Like that's that's a really good that's a good pick on both sides. That's sorry, that's a good trade on both sides. So, yeah. I was actually going to, uh, I'm going to ask you this kind of like a side tangent thing, but wait, let me check it out. Uh, so who would you consider a superstar in this league? What's your definition of a superstar? Because I was thinking like what actually is one. Superstar in this league. Well, they're obviously they have to be you know, what's great your, players. What's your definition of it though? What do you mean the definition? Of What's your definition of a superstar in this league? That's what I'm going to say. A player who can be consistently good. Consistently, okay. like consistently, drop really, really consistently. Obviously, like not like obviously a, per, a player who can consistently, you know, uh, play with his team and help out his team. It seems I don't know really how to, I don't know how to describe it honestly. Okay, fine, but like, like super, who would you who would you call a superstar in this league? Uh, KD, Giannis, LeBron, uh, Steve Curry, obviously, Luca, obviously, probably, um. Just name a few more. Would Tatum really count? Tatum kind of. If you right. want to count Tatum in yours, then that's completely fine. <laughs> but uh, just okay. Just, 
But this is nope. my definition of a superstar is just kind of simple. A championship number one. Really? You know, they don't they don't necessarily have to prove it. It's just that this is kind of strict, yeah. But like they don't necessarily have to prove it, but like you can just watch them say, like, yeah, they could be a championship number one. That's what I was actually thinking about because I feel like in order for someone to be a superstar, they don't really have to be on the championship team. Yeah. Like if you look at if you look at players like you know, Devin Booker with the Suns before this year. He, you you can't you can't not say he's not a superstar, right? No, uh, no, but he wasn't a super. He's not a superstar to me. He's not a superstar. I don't think like, he can be a championship number one. That's just my Devin opinion, Booker. I don't think he can be a championship number one. No, like ever, Devin Booker. No, ever. Yeah, I don't think he can be a championship number one. I don't know, man. I I feel like he he can, to be honest. So okay, so for me, the superstars are. Well, let me get my list out because I forget a lot of names at some point. Like I know that happens to you too. Okay. Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Of course, you said KD, Stephen Curry, Giannis Antetokounmpo, LeBron James. I, I can't believe you left off Giannis, but like, I, <laughs> you I probably didn't say. Yo, yo, yo. I did say. Yo. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Luka Doncic, Nicole Jokic, Anthony Davis. That's probably it. All the superstars? The superstars, just superstars. Yeah. This is I think these guys can be a championship number one. Joel Embiid, Damian Lillard, like Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum. I think those guys are like borderline superstar. Mm-hmm. I think they could be, but I think I just have to see more of them. Because Joel thing, Embiid yeah. has mm-hmm. huh? Joel Embiid That's has thing, injury issues. Thing. Joel Embiid has a lot of injury issues. Jason Tatum, I'm kind of like uh, he's he's younger, right? So like he could be one in the future. So like I'm not really look, writing him off yet. Jimmy Butler, you he you kind of he kind of showed that this year how he cannot be a championship number one. Mm-hmm. Damian Lillard, it's hard to say a guard can be a championship number one, especially like Damian Lillard, just like six three. I know Curry did that, but that's the thing. Curry is kind of the exception to all of this. Curry is Curry. That's it. Curry's in his own level. I feel like like Curry. Curry is probably the best. I, I'm going to honestly say, outside of like Magic Johnson, Curry's the best guard of all time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Remember, I remember we, we were talking about this in the chat. And like one of our one one person said Curry was like the fourth best point guard of all time, and I was like, I was just like, this that's a crime right there. <laughs> that's a crime right there. Like, there's kind no wrong, way yeah. you said yeah, that's a crime right there. I honestly would have would argue that if Curry, you know, continues because he, he's in his 30s now and still playing like he's, mm-hmm. he's in his prime, so he's gonna keep like what they say. Shoot Same shoot. with Kevin Durant, and he came back from an Achilles tear. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like when when you see other players come back from the Achilles tear, they're like different. You know, if you look mm-hmm. at someone like Kobe, right? That's the mm-hmm. thing. Wait, was yeah, Kobe but... ACL or Achilles? It was Achilles. It was Achilles. Yeah. Okay. Achilles. That was like in 2013. Yeah. So that's the thing though. Um, sorry, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, but so those are the superstars. I think that uh, those are uh, those. I think can be championship number ones. It's just you, you can you can put a bad team around them, they'll be good, and then like you can put a good team around them, they'll, the ceiling is championship. The ceiling is championship. The reason why I don't think like Devin Booker can be a championship number one is just that like his. I don't think his bag is deep enough and i don't think he really does everything at a high level consistently like yeah he did draw back to back back 40 point games but like game three and game six he wasn't that great right and i do think and i i said this a lot of times i don't really think the suns were in the finals because of devin booker and chris paul i just do think it was just because of how great the coaching of monty williams was it was it was more like a an 04 pistons type of team right yeah, mm-hmm. it was more of an 04 Pistons type team, just a really great coach that has a bunch of solid players, and then he just knows how to m- 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 gel with them. He knows how to make them play together, mm-hmm. and then that, and then that yeah, good. of course that team, that team, that team didn't win a championship, like, but it di- it wasn't like the, like all the players I listed. Like, you can put a not a terrible team, but you can just put a solid like defensive team or something for like, you just, you can just put them as like their only, as like the only star in the team. And they mm-hmm. can, they can take that team to the next level in general. Yeah. Like LeBron did the same thing with the 2018 Cavs. Like he made them to the finals. James, 
James Harden, Luka Doncic, and like Nikola Jokic, they haven't proven that they can win a championship at the highest level yet. They can def- they can That's definitely, the, but they can do it. But they can do mm-hmm. it. They can do it. it like it, it, they, it can be their superstar to take them to the next, to take their yeah. team to the next level. Yeah, obviously, yeah, all of these guys you're talking about, like you know, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, they're all you know just missing one piece on their team to win the champs. That's literally it. And that's, like what the I, and that's what I of. always think. That's what I always thought with the James Harden and the Houston Rockets. I do think they were just one piece away. I do Chip? think they could have won. I do think they could have won in 2018 when Chris Paul got hurt. Yeah, if Chris Paul didn't get hurt, I honestly I had a feeling that Houston might have actually beat the Warriors. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But like that's exactly the point. But even after that, when that happened, and then like you had you had then the next year Trevor Rizzo was gone, PJ Tucker wasn't really that great, and Chris mm-hmm. Paul wasn't playing well. And the next year when they traded for Russell Westbrook, yeah, we all know Russell Westbrook's playoff struggles. Yeah. So I feel like Russell Westbrook is kind of overrated. Just I do think like it's just that. The fact that like he was an MVP candidate or he was an MVP just not too long ago. And then like he and then now like he's considered like the worst superstar of all time, which I think he is. But that's just what it is. Even like, you know, I I feel like his career isn't really going to go anywhere. I I'm just going to say, I don't think I don't think he can win a ring unless if it's like he's chasing rings like when he's old. Yeah. Man. Anyway, did you see you know, the Lakers rumors with the uh, acquiring Russell Westbrook? Why would the Lakers use Westbrook? I don't feel like Russell Westbrook would fit on the Lakers. Mm-hmm. But I think he can only fit them just on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if he's just leading that bench unit. But imagine like benching Russell Westbrook. That's pretty. But like, then, he's, like, he's, he's, he's but not then, a good like, player, but he's definitely not a bench player either. But like, uh, but that's the thing. Like, if Le- if there's anyone that can probably tell him to go off the bench, it'll probably be LeBron. Because <laughs> LeBron, because Le, like if if LeBron's on your team, you just know LeBron's better than you, so you're just gonna listen to him. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like honestly, I think that's the reason why he, he didn't really do too well in Houston, right? Because like him, did him and Harden really play well? I mean, he obviously coming out of the Thunder and coming to Houston, um, Scott Russell Westbrook was a changed person, right? He wasn't as you know selfish but I, I just don't know about Russell Westbrook he's kind of a wild card for me I don't I don't know mm-hmm. where his career is going to go later do you think do you think the Nets can win a championship with that core yeah mm-hmm. yeah I Definitely. think I think they'll win next year if, if the only thing stopping them is health oh, I've said this so many times and you probably agree with me their the biggest opponent is themselves them? that's what you're saying right uh, huh the biggest their biggest opponent is themselves that's literally Basically, it. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because like you're, how are you gonna outscore that big three four times out of seven tries? Like mm-hmm. I just don't see that happening. And also, a lot of people are blaming on this loss on uh, Steve Nash and his coaching. Do you think that's really it? Uh, well, like what else was he really supposed to do when the only player yeah. that was playing good was Kevin Durant? Kevin Kitty, yeah, mm-hmm. and Bruce Brown was pretty good too. But like that's really it. Because James and Harden also, was playing with an injury, so he wasn't as effective. Because you saw that game, all he was doing was just on the three point line and just shooting. Mm-hmm. With I a feel like the reason, hamstring. yeah, that's really it's really tough. You know what? And then, you know what I feel like the reason for the Nets losing it, so Joe well, Harris, Joe Harris, Joe Harris, yeah. yeah. I was if Joe Harris showed too. up, they would have beat the Bucks. If if any other player apart from Kevin Durant showed up, they would have beaten the Bucks. Like that's just yeah. what it is. KD is just KD. I mean, that's that's just tough. It happens in happens in basketball. Happens in but life. Happens you in also gotta. You also. I don't. I I love to talk about this, but like you also gotta appreciate James Harden for just going from a selfish style of play to like going to Brooklyn and completely re- revolutionizing his career or like his play yeah. style. Because now he's just now he's just like some facilitator that ju- that'll just shoot the ball efficiently, and then that's really his role. What about Kyrie? Do you think Kyrie is gonna? really be a big piece of the three yeah what do you mean mm-hmm. what, what do you think i feel like Kyrie kind of is i haven't heard too much stuff about Kyrie ever since he joined like a left boston really. wait, wait, but what do you mean like a key piece to the team because yeah if you're a Kyrie irving you're going to be a key piece to the team you're in you're on you're the star player well, see that's the thing though uh 
honestly, the Nets are just the Nets are kind of in an interesting situation because if they do, uh, sorry, what's like if they do, um, just depends. Like honestly, like you said, if they if they stay healthy, and obviously throughout the season they didn't really play the top three player like the big three together a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that was. Should, yeah, they didn't really play as much as a lot of games together. But the games they did play together, they were they were matching. They were meshing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Kind of. I think. I, I, see I think them, that's I just the them, thing is. Sorry, oh, you, you want to see them what? I, I said I was going to say I wanted to see them play more in the regular season together. Mm-hmm. That's what I. Th- that's why I think like a full off season would like help. Mm-hmm. Also, the same thing with the Lakers because the Lakers were also like injury prone this year. I do think a full off season would help them. But like, Honestly, unless they don't get, uh, if they if they go with this team against the Nets, like hopefully, hopefully we see Lakers Nets finals next year, man, <laughs> or like Clippers Nets finals because I, I would like to see that. But that will be a seven game series for sure. Wait, which one, so Clippers that, or Lakers? Both. Both. Yeah, I was, this year I was gonna say like it, it was gonna be one of the LA teams and then the Nets. The Nets. Right? I yeah. thought it was the Clippers and Nets for sure, but that didn't happen. <laughs> The Clippers, okay. I do kind of feel bad for the Clippers because I don't really know what Paul George is. Because, well, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really their fault this time that they that they got out. It was like Kawhi's injury kind of like put them in this place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's, that is what it is. Let's, I guess we'll just look at the uh, the free the free agency and uh, the free throw. <laughs> Sorry, the, the free, free throw. Agency. The free throw. <laughs> The free agency and the uh, the rest of off season to see what really happens. Yeah, so we we both think Kawhi will stay with the Clippers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we both yep. think Kawhi will stay with the Clippers. You think DeRozan will go to the Heat? I kind of have Maybe. an underrated take. I don't think it's gonna happen, but like I just think this might happen, and that's DeRozan to the Celtics. Why? Because he wouldn't really have to be the first option or second that option. He would have to be the third it. option. Yeah. No, he, he would that's actually, actually fit that team well because he could. Yeah, he that, could, that would actually fit. He could facilitate if he wants to. Mm-hmm. Now that yeah, now that I think about it, that's actually a really nice fit for Demar Rosen. Honestly, a veteran, mm-hmm. a veteran shooting guard on a team of you know a win now team, basically. Basically, the team that wants to win now, yeah. Mm-hmm. How about how about um the how about Kyle Lowry? I want Kyle Lowry to go to Philly and get Ben Simmons, but oh, you want to I sign feel... a trade like that? Yeah, I don't think that's don't gonna happen. I don't think the Philly would want to trade Kyle Lowry for Ben Simmons, but maybe maybe they do it because they did say they want an All Star in return. But mm-hmm. they want an All Star in return. Really... They also they also need a veteran playmaking guard. A floor general, which is literally what Kyle Lowry is, right? Mm-hmm, and Ben yeah. Simmons, they, they, I, I don't know what Philly is going to do with Ben Simmons, to be honest with you. Yeah, same. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. Like I, because I, they they rejected the Pacers' offer, which was Malcolm Brogdon in the first. That's that's okay, I guess. I don't know what the reason why I think the reason why they just rejected him because they they can use Ben Simmons in so many trade assets. That like mm-hmm. in so many trade packages that like they're probably just using him as like an arsenal. So they're like, okay, let's try him on this, try him on that. Mm-hmm. But, but okay, so I, you think Kyle Lowry will go to Philly? You if you want him to go to Philly, I, I hope, I really hope, I really do. Oh, because you want Ben Simmons on your team. I want, I want Ben yeah. Simmons. That's the thing. Like people are saying, yo, Ben Simmons is bad. He's going to go to the Shanghai. The Raptors, and, yeah. The, the Raptors, I've, I've I talked to. Him. The, I've talked to like some Raptors and they're like, yeah, Benson's is us. Like, yeah, he is, but like, uh, like mm-hmm. I think he would fit pretty well with your team. <laughs> he would fit really well with Toronto. Where, where, but where would you put him? Like the point guard or center? Uh, probably a forward, honestly. Yeah. Oh, forward? like I, I would, I would play him besides. I would probably play him beside like I don't know Siakam. Not Siakam. Uh, what's his name? Gary Trent. Gary Trent. Oh, so oh, so he's a point guard. Not really. No, Gary oh, Trent small plays forward. small forward. Yeah. Oh, so, so I have he's a, feeling, a small forward. Yeah, so I have a feeling he, him and Gary Trent are going to play together really well next season. But like, how will Siak- well, what would Siakam be with that then? Siak- we, Siakam has proved time and time that he can play the center position, right? Or Toronto can just... Depends on, depends on what we do. Like, we could move Gary Trent to the shooting mm, here, here's, here's a Yeah, here's what it is. I think you can have, like, Fred Van Vliet at the point guard, Gary mm-hmm. Trent's shooting guard, 
uh, Ben, I mean, not Ben Sims, OG at the three, Ben Sims at the four, and Siakam at the five. Or depends if we, I feel like if we re sign Ken Birch, I feel like Ken Birch should be able to start. How about, yeah, but let's say you do do that. Let's say you trade for Ben Simmons, right? And then you get that, you get that Warriors package. What would like, what, what would the starting lineup be then? Because uh, will you have James Wiseman at the center? If we get the trade, right? Uh, yeah. So James, what we would pro? I mean, James Wiseman is a young player. I feel like Toronto wouldn't start him right away. Just like how Toronto did um, did Malachi Flynn, right? I feel like Toronto wouldn't start him right away. They they should probably they would probably look at him and develop him a little bit more before actually starting James Wiseman, but. Uh, if that's the case, Siakam is gone. Um, I would actually. Well, Ben Simmons can definitely play the four position. We know that. For yeah, sure, easily, right? easily. I would want he's him to play the four forward. position, yeah. like right there. He's a yeah, stretch he's a forward. Stre- Did you just say yeah, he's a exactly. stretch? Forward? How is he a we stretch develop, forward? He has a three point. Like once we okay, develop, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which probably, we know it's definitely there. You can probably, yeah. you can probably get the confidence in him. Yeah, yeah you can probably get the. confidence. We know he has the three point shot. We just, he's confident. He can shoot the three. That's that's just how it is. It's just as confident, yeah. I also, oh my, also, what I was actually gonna say, right, was that if Benson is in Toronto with just all these young pieces, he's gonna want to be more aggressive. He's gonna want it because he he'll know it's actually his time, and like mm-hmm. no one's stopping him. Because when when him and Joel Embiid were like there, Joel Embiid would just be in the paint, and then like when he tries to go to the paint, it would be so clogged to the point where just like he'll miss so many shots, yeah. and that's where his mm-hmm. confidence would just be shaken. Ben Simmons would be a really nice fit. I would really love to see that. I would love to see Ben Simmons on the Rockets just because I I would want to trade John Wall <laughs> and Ben Simmons. Yeah. Like I just want I just want John Wall off the team because of his contract. But John Wall's contract, yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of like me with Siakam. Siakam's contract is kind of it's okay, huge. no, but Siakam's actually a lot better than John Wall, so you can probably say like, oh, yeah, but. Well, yeah, uh, that's- but but if if John Wall for Ben Simmons happened, you have Ben Simmons at the four, Christian Wood at the five. That's that would be a pretty good fit because. And you guys also get Cade. I mean, sorry, no, that's a Rocky. Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Yeah, Jalen Green. Hopefully, they be, select Jalen Green, man. <laughs> that would be a good. That would be a good starting lineup. That would be a very good. KPJ starting at the one. K, uh, KPJ at the Jr. one. Played point. Yeah, he he's he 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 tweets so many. He tweeted once, "I'm a point guard." <laughs> he tweeted. He just said, KPJ, I feel like KPJ should not be playing on the one, but no, no, but like what KPJ at the one, Jalen Green at the two, Jayshon Tate at the three, Shanty. and then Ben Simmons at the four, and then Wood at the five. That would be pretty that should good. be a good that should be a good young infrastructure. That, was, that should be a good infrastructure right there. Mm-hmm. But let's say yo, let's say that actually does happen. Let's say they trade Wall for Simmons and then the Rockets get the first overall pick, like they trade a lot, and then it's like Cade, Cade, um, Cade, uh, Wood, and Simmons. That's actually that's insane. That would be okay. That, that would be that pretty would be good. All those guys are like what six eight, and they're all and, and like they're playing it's like 50 positions. Man, that would be insane. Honestly, I feel like if you're Philly, who would you want more? Kyle Lowry or John Wall? Kyle Lowry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it was prime John Wall, I would have easily said prime John yeah, Wall. Prime John Wall. Yeah. John Wall's way out of his prime. He's about yeah. to retire. That's in my opinion. If I was Philly, I would not trade either of those guys for Ben Simmons. If I'm getting like a better player with Ben Simmons, then probably. I feel like Toronto may throw in the first because we, we still have the 2022 first, right? Mm-hmm. If Toronto, I feel, no, actually, I wouldn't trade that close, honestly, because Toronto's in rebuild right now. Probably want to keep the draft pick. I feel like Kyle Lowry in a first from sometime in the future will be enough to get Ben Simmons. Yeah, I I, I honestly don't know what Philly's going to do with him because like they they're in so many trade they can put him in so many trading arsenals and just understand which one's the best one. Mm-hmm. But like that's the thing like with Philly and the Heat like having good front offices so they can become a lot better. I don't know if the Bucks can make the finals again. That's just my opinion. Uh, honestly, I yeah, I feel like this is honestly a one and done thing as well. Mm-hmm. And the, the Suns team. will probably will easily not go back to the finals, yeah. especially the Suns, the Suns is not doing the same thing, especially yeah. with how stacked the West is. Mm-hmm. 
the East is also really stuck now that we look at it. It, it before it was like, yo, it's just all the West, all Western Conference, like with the Warriors time and everything, right? Mm-hmm. But now everything is just it's kind of even too. <laughs> the like, reason the why the, the reason why the East is good considered good now is because the Nets are like right there in the Nets are in yeah. the Eastern Conference. I mean, you have the Nets, the the Heat. Obviously, you can't ignore what they did in the bubble. That was insane. Well, they they did get swept this year, but mm-hmm, like... but still, it's you you can't ignore the Heat. I mean, also Boy, I can't lot... ignore the sweep uh, the sweep. Like if a team gets swept, like that, I just can't. Like I don't think they're contenders or anything. Depends. Okay. What, what we're gonna obviously it's it's a big off season. This is gonna be a really good off season. Oh yeah, I forgot about one key free agent. I forgot Mike Conley. Do you think he'll resign with the Jazz? Yeah. Where else would he go? Like he he could really go anywhere. He his hit hit. See, Mike Conley was really good this year. He was an All Star too. Mike Conley Mike, was Mike really Conley's good this year. Good, yeah. It's just a good. He's, he's like a vet point guard, right? Kind of like Kyle Lowry, just fits on every mm-hmm. team essentially. But why? Why would Utah let him go? That's the thing. But but that's the thing. Like he he might he might ask for a lot of money. Why would? Uh, that's uh yeah, good. Utah will probably can would get him, and I don't think he will leave Utah. I think he'll stay in Utah. Mm-hmm. But like that's but like he is a key free agent to just look out for. I just have a feeling Mike Conley kind of wasted too much of his prime in uh, Memphis. I feel like he could have he would have left the team a lot earlier. He was getting, but yeah, but he's getting paid. That's why. Well, I mean, still, he's getting paid. He was getting paid like thirty million a year, and he wasn't even like an all star. But that's the thing. That's the thing about Memphis. So Memphis pays everyone. They're not really a win now team. Like even after Jaron Jackson and uh, and John Morant, Memphis is not a very good team. Memphis is a really good team. I don't know what you're talking about. They're, they're they're a good team. They're just they're just not good enough to win the chip. That, oh like yeah, 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 good. yeah, yeah. Of course they're not. They're not good enough to win a chip. Of course. Oh yeah. Speaking of these uh Dame trade rumors, actually, that's what I was. That's Dame why I said the Philly ones, right? But I said, and I saw in the chat, you guys. Oh, who said? Someone said they wanted Dame, right? And they said, oh, would you trade Siakam for Dame? But. Yeah, Toronto no. should. Yeah, Toronto should not do that. Why the hell would Toronto? Unless, trade unless, Dame? unless, unless if it's like Dame and Siakam, but even then, like Toronto's gonna know. have to give up Siakam for Dame. That's just no, no. I, I think you would have to give up either Siakam or OG because OG does OG. have great upside. OG has great upside, but I don't think I don't think Portland would do that. Why mm-hmm. would they ever do? OG? Yeah, no, no. But you know, you know, you know where I want to see Dame go. The Warriors. No, 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 man. Uh, bro, I'm, I'm a Rockets fan. I don't want to see the Warriors good again. <laughs> Wait, who? Who? The Pelicans. Damon Zion pick and roll? Yo, that, <laughs> that'd be, be insane. Who they, who they, like a Lonzo Ball trade, maybe? No, no. They can add Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram for the... Uh... Brandon Ingram. And like a, and they have a lot of picks, too. They have... um, What's his name? They, they have the Lakers future, and they have their own. I don't really. I I don't think. I don't think the Pelicans should give up uh, Brandon Ingram for what? Dame, honestly, I'm gonna be Why? honest. Why? Because they're they're not a win now. I are they really a win now team without Brandon Ingram? But are but they're getting Damian Lillard in return, and the reason why I think they should do that is because they want to convince Zion to stay, and they want to make the playoffs at least. They want to make Zion's the playoffs at least. Zion is gonna stay. That's just how it is. I, really? I have a feeling Zion's Zion's not. Like, why would Zion leave New Orleans? Where would because he go? Because they're not making the playoffs. But why? But why would he leave though? Like, what, what, how much money would he want? Like, what, because out out of these few years, I don't think he can just ask for a lot of money. I feel like he should probably stay. What do you mean out of these two, bro? He's had a, he's had a good two year stretch so far. He has a good two year stretch, but I have a feeling he's nowhere near a superstar. I think he could be. He could be. He, he could be, be. Yeah, but he, he's not going to ask a lot of money. He, he definitely can't get a lot of money. Yeah, I'm not talking about right now. But I'm saying, yeah, but like if they want to convince Zion to stay in New Orleans for his career, they would need to make the playoffs, right? And that Dame and Zion would easily make the playoffs. Yeah. Make the playoffs doesn't mean win the championship, though. That, I think yeah. that's the most important thing. Instead of like focusing on the playoffs oh yeah okay no but you're talking about in dame's point of view yeah would you want to see dame in a championship team yeah yeah of course Mm -hmm. yeah 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 you're talking about it it, you're so you're talking about a dame point of view right so yeah Yeah, of mm -hmm. course the pelicans are on a win now team but i'm saying those 
if they if the Pelicans want to convince Zion to stay in New Orleans mm-hmm. and uh, uh and, ma- and make the playoffs because that's what they want to do because Zion Zion because New Orleans is a small market and Zion probably wants to play in a bigger market so like mm-hmm. so and wants to make the playoffs a lot of times so that's why if they want Zion to stay, Damian Lillard, Brandon Ingram, bunch of picks, go get that get that Damian Zion pick and roll yeah. would just be insane. So that would be. That would be a pretty good team, though. But I feel like Dame on the Lakers would also work. Imagine I don't, that. I don't, if, I don't think I don't think a trade. I don't think a trade would be uh, possible. Yeah, but yeah, possible. Because like, what, who are they going to trade? Kyle Kuzma for? Oh, they're not going to take Kyle Kuzma. That's that's just yeah. not enough for. I don't know, man. That's, like we're, we're just going to look at this offseason and see what happens, man. But like the soon, only, man. the yeah. only. The only trade I can really see, the the only trade package I, I can see that's good for Portland, apart from the New Orleans one for getting Brandon Ingram, is the Ben Simmons Philadelphia one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depends. I I really want Ben Simmons in Toronto. That's my opinion, but I don't it know. Is. Have you seen like rumors that they that they're doing Cal Lowry in a sign and trade for Ben Simmons? I have, yeah. Oh, really? Toronto Toronto's interest in Ben Simmons. That's just. Oh like yeah, yeah, they are. They are. I saw that. So, but yeah, like I, apart from Ben Simmons to Portland, and then Brandon Ingram to Portland, and Dame goes to either one of those teams. Those are like the best trade packages, I think. The Portland Trailblazers can get for Dame. I'm honestly gonna. I I hold this Brandon Ingram. He's like 24. 24. Okay. Yeah, that's that's decent, maybe? I guess, because. Because I know Portland from now on, if they're looking to trade Dame, they're gonna blow up the team. It's it's a full on mm-hmm. rebuild at this point. Yeah. But yeah, so Brandon Ingram's 25 of 24, 25. Yeah, so he is a good in for sure. Real good build mm-hmm. right there. All right. Uh yeah, so is that is that yeah, we've season. been at it for a pretty long time. I didn't really Man, I gotta get going actually really soon. So yeah, so and we also have to make another one, but that like that we can do that tomorrow or something. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, if you have, if you're here, thanks for watching. You know, Stephen got anything to say? No, man. It's good time talking. Good time talking. It's off season time. Congrats to the Bucks mm-hmm. for winning the 2021 NBA championship. And this is, I'm Harsakar, and this is Stephen as the guest, and this is all facts, no cap.